Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to having a great conversation with our good friend, Herbie J. Pilato. How are you doing, Herbie? Hey. Hey, guys. How are you? Good, good. Herbie J., um, you've been um, a writer, a uh, producer. Um, you've got, you've got your own talk show, Then Again with Herbie J. Pilato. And uh, you've been a television executive. You really run the gamut. But I know, since we talked to you uh, way, way back, that it all started with your love of television. You just wanted to meet and be with the stars that you grew up with on television. Here, a kid from Rochester, New York, actually got to work with his gorgeous Elizabeth Montgomery, got to meet these stars, work in the, in the industry, and you've written a bunch of books. How many books? Six books? Twelve. Twelve. Mm. Forgive me. Didn't mean to insult you with a low number. <laughs> um, but one of the books is about male icons. It's about yep. the, you call it Dashing, Daring, and Debonair, I love, which is a great title, I think, by the way. But it's about the, the men of television. And boy, what a diverse group crowd in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, when we were all growing up, what a diverse crowd of images, male images, they they offered us. I mean, television was, your book is kind of, forgive me for going on, but I <laughs> I just love it. You, you captured the culture as well as talking about these, these actors. So what made you do this book? Well, I did a book called Glamour, Gidgets, and the Girl Next Door, uh, television's iconic women of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So it just seemed to be the the, the next logical step would be to do a sequel of uh, the males. And that's when Dashing, Daring, and Debonair uh, came, into, came into the picture. So just like, you know, the other book represented the, uh, the ideal women of the 50s, 60s, and 70s of those eras, I wanted to choose... Um, guys who were so representative of of those time periods in the most positive way, you know. I mean, there were a couple that I left out because they weren't so positive. And, Ooh, and I'd I, be interested. I'd be interested to know who they were. <laughs> well, I think if you think about it, you probably could come up with a few names. Um, but I just, I don't know. I mean, I always try to take the high road anyway. It's not as though I don't write the truth in my books, but I always try to, to, to just rise above the negative and focus on the positive. You know, I'm the I'm the Pollyanna, I guess, yeah. the Pollyanna. <laughs> um, but you know, there were just so many uh, diverse um, performers as well as people behind the scene. Um, because I, I also profile people like Norman Lear and Gene Roddenberry, you know, created Star Trek and, and, um, and Michael Landon, who did both. You know, he was on Bonanza. Little House on the Prairie, and he was also a producer director. So I tried to cover a, a large um, width of, uh, of, of, of particular performers and, and guys who were very influential in television. Well, uh, well now, Herbie, you got, to, you got to meet many of these people, uh, yes. but uh, uh, many others you just wrote about that you knew about. So, yeah. that, uh, so uh, I, I'm one of the things that we really uh, um, uh, find fascinating about the way you've developed your career is that, uh, as John said uh, earlier, uh, uh, you got to Hollywood and you met a lot of the people who were idols of yours in one form or another. So uh, maybe we can start with uh, one or two of the people that uh, you met uh, and uh, uh, who are of, of particular uh, interest uh, as far as you're concerned. That you've, uh, people that you actually knew. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Larry, uh, Larry Wilcox is the first one that comes to mind from Chips. Uh, just a ter terrific, terrific person. And um, <clears throat> just a terrific, terrific person. And he is so down to earth and, and so um, accessible. And I was really impressed by him. No airs about him. And you know, really is the ideal to me, the ideal um, TV male icon or TV celebrity who who just uh, 
let a part of himself bleed into the character that he portrayed or the on on chips robert conrad was was another that i had met and he had also done my tv show then again he was tough <laughs> robert conrad was actually he did the last uh the last on-screen interview i think that he ever did was on my show then again but for my book it was that he was he was tough he yeah, was well he he was a, a tough character he he saw himself as a tough guy, yeah, I think. he did. Uh, it, which brings me to the point, and, and that is that the public persona, that, that the television persona that all of these various actors um, lived by, whether they had, you know, whether it was typecasting or not, they lived by it, was often, but not always, different from who they really were. Yeah. And, and I think the importance of your book Forgive me for calling it an important book because it it does look like just fun reading, and it is. It's a great read, but I think it's an important book because it does capture um, that quality of that era and what we held up to be heroes, if you will. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was you know it was a simpler time, and uh, with really a strong message that just gets cluttered today. You know, it's like nobody knows really who they're supposed to like and not like today or how you're supposed to act. You're afraid to do anything where it was just so clear, you know, in, in the 50s, 60s and 70s, you know, who, who was, who were the good guys and who were the bad guys, who were the good girls and who were the bad girls. Everything yeah. is so murky today because everything seems to be muddled and, and all of the characters you see on television today look the same. You know, there's no real, everybody's beautiful and perfect. Uh, and they're also sarcastic and sardonic. There's no yeah. true heroes today. I don't see that. But you knew who the heroes were on 50s, 60s, and 70s television. And everybody was different. Everybody had their own look. Everybody had a different personality. Um, you know, on the Mod Squad, there was, you know, Link. You know who who happened to be African American. Uh, then there was Michael Cole as as Pete. You know the the white guy, and it, it was it was really that cut and dry. And they didn't make it such a conscious decision, even though it sounded that way. But it it it, it was very representative and very. And they were different. Uh, if they were to do the Mod Squad today, Pete and both Pete and Link would be boring and mean. And, and afraid to show emotion. Um, whereas Link was the cool one, but you knew that he was compassionate and caring. And uh, Pete was the more emotional one. Today, I don't know if you could see those differences beyond- You bring up, you bring up a good point, And that is that uh, even though looking back at these characters, I, I think of uh, uh, John Travolta uh, in back, Welcome Back, Cotter, and uh, Dick Van Dyke, uh, even though they seem very stereotypical, they all had, even and they did, they fit a stereotype, but they all had, they all portrayed, thanks to the writers, another side of them. You knew they weren't one-trick ponies. They weren't just cardboard cutouts of a stereotype. They were, they seemed to be, at least to us at the time, <laughs> they seemed to be real people. It's true, and and you know, I've talked about this a lot in other interviews, and maybe it, maybe even on some of the the appearances that I've made with you all here. But likability is such an important factor, and charm. You don't see a lot of likable characters on TV today. You don't see a lot of likable performances on TV today, and you don't see a lot of charm. But John Travolta as Vinnie Barbarino. He had charm. Henry Winkler as the Fonz had charm. Uh, Dick Van Dyke certainly as Rob Petrie had charm. And there was a certain showmanship in the way that these characters were presented. No, that is all of that is missing today. I didn't see you mention Archie Bunker. <laughs> well, believe it or not, he was charming in his own ignorant way. Uh, and it's important because Carol O'Connor was playing an unlikable character, but he played that character in a likable way. 
who had ultimately, in the end, and as the show, as All in the Family continued, he became a, a warmer character because he had to. It's like, sure. you know, Joan Rivers, when she was hosting, uh, sub-hosting for Johnny Carson on Monday nights, it was okay. It was, that was just enough. You could, you could only take one day a week of Joan Rivers. But every day, it got to be too much. And that's why I think that show didn't work. So as Archie continued on, um, he became, uh, his ignorance would be playing into him either missing out on something or, or looking like the fool, but he would ultimately, ultimately come around. And certainly when All in the Family became Archie Bunker's place, it was definitely a different situation. Mm -hmm. It was definitely warmer. Sadly, however, there were people who viewed Archie Bunker as a hero. Just like they viewed, there were people who viewed Sherman Helms, Helmsley as on on the Jeffersons as a hero, you know, and they were or or um, uh, uh, Red Fox on Sanford and Son as a hero. Those all of those characters were bigots, uh, you know, they were uh, ignorant. But there were those who could see that and laugh at them, and unfortunately, there were those of all races who thought they were just the coolest, and they sure. weren't. Well, we were supposed to laugh at them. Right. right. That was the whole point of Archie Bunker and right. uh, uh, Sanford Sr. Right. Yeah. Now, your your, your book is uh, has the forward by Adam West, who played Batman. Now, Batman is another completely different character. Adam West, I don't know that he had much after Batman, but he was Batman. And uh, that show was a cardboard show from beginning to end. They made no bones about it. That was the fun of it. The wink, wink, pow, zam, woofy. You know, that, <laughs> what, tell me about Adam West. Yeah, that it was such an honor to have Adam West write the foreword to my book. I just was blown away when he said yes. I reached out to his agent and his agent said, okay, well, let me ask him. And he said, yes. And the great thing about Adam and his character, his performance as Batman, is you, there was no doubt that this was a happy camp-er uh, on, on Batman. He, he was a hero. He was upbeat. And certainly Burt Ward as Robin were, you know, was another upbeat character. Later on when you know they did those dark Batman movies, it's like, what? You know, Batman... <laughs> Okay, fine, maybe these the Dark Knight and there's that other different layers and that's very interesting. But that's not the kind of hero that I wanted to see. And that's not the kind of heroes that we were looking, we all were looking to see in, in the 60s. But Adam West came through, you know. And that show, Batman, was one of the most popular shows, not only on television, but within the industry. Everybody wanted to guest star on that show because it was so much fun. Well, that tells us about how t times were different back then. Um, and of course, times do change and literary styles change and culture changes. And of course, you're going to get dark, you know, Batman, the Dark Knight. Eventually, we're going to go into uh, stories that uh, have endings that are not clear, heroes that are not heroes, you know, things like that. But your book is a, a wonderful flashback, if you will, to the 50s, 60s and 70s. Herbie, uh, speaking, speaking about your book. Um, if people wanted to get uh, this book or one of the others you've written, how's the best way for them to go about doing that? Well, you can, you can get them personally signed by me, um, HerbieJPilato.com, or, or you can order through Facebook and find me through Facebook. But it's a, a little more expensive that way, I have to say it, to get it personally signed. So, but you can get them cheaper, um, hardcovers and everything, right on Amazon.com or, or BarnesandNoble.com. Where they're they're very inexpensive, and it's and they you know Amazon is, is wonderful for having uh, providing all kinds of of avenues and ways to get those books. Good. Well, I hope everybody gets to read the book. It's a fun fun read. Thank you very much. I'm I'm proud of it. Actually, I I think it was before Mary the Mary Tyler Moore story. It was my favorite book that I wrote. I I worked very hard on it. And I tried to expand upon things that I was not allowed really to do with the Glamour Gidgets in the Girl Next Door book. With Dashing, Daring, and Debonair, I was allowed to explore many more um, um, individuals than I was with the previous book. Well, well John, I'm, I'm uh, 
I'm the one in charge of, uh, of putting our guests on the spot. So oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this now. I've enjoyed this conversation so much that I'm going to I want to make arrangements to uh, uh, tape another interview with Herbie on uh, Gidget and uh, some of the other books. So I think we're going to have you back to talk about more of your books. What do you th what do you think, John? Glamour, Gidgets, and the Girls Next Door. Yay! Coming I'm up. Active. I'd love to come back, guys. You're terrific. You're very welcoming. You're everything that every TV star should be today. Well, <laughs> well kind of... we are, in that regard, we are fans. Yes. And I, you know what I love about all your books, Herbie, uh, Herbie J, is that, um, for me, they're history books. Yeah. Now, they're fun. They're cultural and there's a great, you know, memory back, go back to relive some of those early years in my youth. But for me, they're also history books because I think we share a love of television and the development, the way things, television started and have changed and changed and changed and now we're streaming. Well, I, I tried to do with each of my books, I wanted whoever was reading, whether it was Dashing or the Gidgets or whatever, I wanted them to be as happy reading the book as they were watching the shows. Oh, um, that's good. The book's profile. So yeah, that's how you it. succeeded in that. You succeeded. We'll Thank see you, you again, Herbie. Thank see you. See you soon, we hope. See you, everybody. See ya. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.